I wanted to continue, inshallah ta'ala, in a tawassul ilallah dua, how to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our duas. And I hope, inshallah ta'ala, now, by the end of the month, really, we'll have some, some of the adab, some of the mannerisms in the dua. And the one that I'm going to talk about tonight is one of the most potent ways to have your dua increased in quality and beauty, but it's also one of the most dangerous concepts if not applied appropriately. And that is the concept of al inkisab to be broken in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to idhar al-faqr, to show your poverty, to show your vulnerability, and to speak of it in the capacity of your dua. It's actually pretty dangerous if you do it wrong, but it is very powerful if you do it right. And so I want to give you an analogy actually that I was thinking about, subhanAllah, as we went into ayat al-sajda uh, in Surah al-Furqan, uh, we have the verse of sajda and then وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizing people that spend their nights in prostration and sujood and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemning those that don't make sujood to Ar-Rahman. So I want to give you an example here. If your dua could be drawn out, what does a dua look like in sajda? You know, physically speaking, right? You have the image in your mind. When you physically humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your face is on the ground and you're saying Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, right? What would your dua look like if it had a physical image to it? How do you make your dua like a sajda, right? And so we just talked about how to extol the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? al asmaul wa sifat And so you're glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you want to humble yourself. You want to lower yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we find this in many places in the Quran in very beautiful ways. رَبِّ إِنِّي إِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ What Musa السلام, says in Madian when he's completely desperate, Oh Allah, I am in need of whatever good you're going to send to me. I am completely in need of that. Right? So extolling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness. Who can give me another example of a prophet in the Qur'an who shows his weakness? Zakariya alayhi salam. Zakariya alayhi salam and Ayyub alayhi salam. That's exactly what I was looking for. Zakariya alayhi salam. Ya Allah, my bones have withered on the inside. My hair has burst with gray. Meaning I am weak on the outside. I am weak on the inside. The, the, the age shows to everyone. And what I feel on the inside, you know. Right? So weak on the inside, weak on the outside. Ayyub alayhi salam. When Ayyub alayhi salam calls out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, oh Allah, uh, I have been struck by hardship. And you are the most merciful of those who show mercy. Right? So all he did, literally, was a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, attribute name of Allah, and to show his weakness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are so many things that we have to take into consideration when doing this right though. Number one, Make sure that you mention the blessings of Allah upon you before you mention the hardship that you are in. Okay? If you're going to mention the hardship that you are in to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sure you first mention the blessings that you have in your dua. Don't go straight to the hardship. Instead, start with the blessings, the things that you're grateful for. Because that's part of the hamd, that's part of the thana part, right? That's part of the thana part. Praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings that you do have. And then you go into the part where you talk about your weakness. Number two, the scholars say don't attribute the hardship to Allah. Al khayru kulluhu biyadik. Right? All good is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't attribute hardship and evil to you. So don't say, oh Allah, you did this to me. Or don't even insinuate that, that you put me in this bad situation. Attribute the good to Allah, don't attribute the hardship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that would be bad mannerisms in dua. The ulama also mentioned, when it comes to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Speak of the blessings of Allah. Someone asks you how you're doing, you say, Alhamdulillah. You know, here we are, we're in good health, we're in good spirits, Alhamdulillah, everything is going well, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen. Extol the blessings of Allah upon you. Show that gratitude. Spread the spirit of gratitude. Right? Look at us, alhamdulillah, we're living in this situation, in that situation, I have nothing to complain about. Right? So speak of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in a boastful way, in a grateful way. But when it comes to your 
hardships and when it comes to complaining about your situation, Allah. I complain of my hardship and grief to Allah. Okay, so Ya'qub gives us that example. He's not complaining to his sons about it and says, then I'm going to go make dua for it too. Right? He's keeping it up, you know, bottled in a healthy way. I actually don't want to use the word bottled. Let me, let me put, he's channeling it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes, of course, people need counseling. Sometimes people need shura. That's different. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about complaining. As Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, Shakawta man yarhamuka ila man la yarhamuka. When you complain to other people, it's like you're complaining to the one who shows you no mercy about the one who shows you all mercy. Okay, Allah is the one who shows you mercy. And so when you go complaining to people, it's like you're complaining about the one who shows you mercy to the one who shows you no mercy. Right? No, no. Keep the hardship and the circumstances. Look, I'm going to take that to my dua. It's a part of my grieving process to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that brokenness, with that hurt, with that hardship. And when it comes to the blessings, speak of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you and bring them into your dua. And bring them into your dua. And of course, there's the famous uh, poem of Iqbal, Shakwa. And then, Jawab al Shakwa. I think Sheikh Yasser Burjah speaks Urdu. You can, come, can you come do the poem in Urdu, Sheikh? He's not wearing the vest today. When he wears the vest, his Urdu comes out, right? <laughs> I'm not wearing the vest either, you're right. But you know, the idea of the complaints and the, the answer to the complaint, right? You bring your complaints to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ulama also mentions something very beautiful here, which is don't disparage yourself, but mention your desperation. Like if you look at the ways of the Prophet ﷺ in this regard and the Prophets, they didn't attack themselves when they were complaining about how hard, you know, something was, right? They didn't make themselves unworthy and, and, and express self-hatred, right? It was more of just explaining the difficulty of the circumstance. Ya Allah, you see, I'm, I'm poor. I don't have anything right now. Ya Allah, I'm hurting. Ya Allah, uh, this person uh, is doing this to me. Inni maghloob. Fantasif. I'm overcome right now. Help me overcome, right? I'm feeling overcome. Help me overcome. But don't disparage yourself and start attacking yourself in dua. Because that's, that sinks below what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wants of you. Allah azza wa does not want to humiliate you. Allah wants to honor you with this dua, right? So don't disparage yourself, but mention the desperation that you're in. And I know it's a fine line between the two, but you know, what you really find from the prophets and from the dua of the Prophet sallallahu is that the prophets mention the circumstance being difficult, not themselves being inherently unworthy or evil or something of that sort. Like, I deserve this, I had this coming to me. No, no. Ya Allah, I'm suffering from this, I'm suffering from that. Not, it must be the sin I committed five years ago that you still haven't forgiven me for, which is why I'm under this cruelty, right? Don't disparage yourself. I never deserved this good. No, no, don't disparage yourself. Mention the hardship of the circumstance that you're in, but don't disparage yourself. The next thing that the scholars mention in this regard is that as you complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't condition, don't condition the alleviation of the hardship with worship or condition your worship with the alleviation of hardship. You know, there are certain ways that this can go wrong. One of them is, oh Allah, if I persist in this situation, then I'm going to do this in a bad way. Like if I stay in this way, I'm going to have no choice but to commit this sin and I'm going to do this and I'm going to hurt myself or hurt this person or do this or do that. Don't put a sinful condition on it, right? Like you can't threaten Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the removal of the distress. The second thing is the scholars say, SubhanAllah, one of the adab of Islam, one of the things that Islam brought to us in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that your Islam is unconditional. So you say, Ya Allah, if you lift this, then I'll start doing this, 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 and that. No, you should have started doing this, this, and that anyway. Right? So don't sit there and put conditions on, you know, I'll start praying regularly. I'll start doing this. I'll start wearing this. I'll start fulfilling this obligation. I'll leave off this sin. You should be doing that regardless, right? What, because what you're insinuating in that situation is that Allah has not given you enough already for you to fulfill an obligation or to quit a sin. So don't attach these conditions to it. Allah does not need them. They don't make your dua more potent, nor do they make you more praiseworthy in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last thing, dear brothers and sisters, that the scholars mention is connecting the need to a name and attribute. Remember, we're talking about completing a dua. 
right? So you're beginning by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you're mentioning the asma and sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the names and attributes of Allah. And you're calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those names and attributes. And then you can mention the specific need connected to the name and attribute for the dua. So you actually are taking the time to make that connection all the way through. So if you are sinful, I committed the sin, I'm in this situation, I need you, Ya Allah, Ya Ghaffar, Ikhfirli. If you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sustenance, right? You mention your poverty, you mention your difficult circumstance. Ya Razaq, Razukni. Oh, you who sustains, sustain me, right? And mention what Allah Azza wa Jal has already sustained you with. Mention the things that you can praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessings. Make that part of your thana. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who always turn back to Him with our hardships and thank Him for our blessings and get closer to Him in hardship and in ease. And may He make the best of our deeds, the last of them. May He allow our du'as to be accepted in Ramadan and beyond. And may He allow us to observe Laylatul Qadr. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.